The man who Vladimir Putin most feared or but certainly attempted to assassinate and locked up for years has died. Activist and opposition leader Alexei Navalny spent his final days suffering in solitary confinement inside a hellhole Arctic prison, paying the ultimate price for daring to take on the Kremlin boss. Navalny, Putin's most visible and long-standing critic, had been locked up for three decades last August on trumped-up charges of terrorism, treason and extremism. He did not expect to be released during Putin's lifetime, but it turned out he would never be allowed to live that long. Today, he felt unwell after a walk, according to Russia's Federal Penitentiary Service, and lost consciousness. An ambulance arrived to revive him, but he died. It said the cause of the death was being established. His supporters are now blasting what they have called a political murder, an historic and monstrous crime. His death comes only weeks before Putin is all but certain to secure a fifth term as president that would secure his brutal reign over Russia until at least 2030. Now he will head into those rubber stamp elections with Russia's most prominent political prisoner forever silenced. Ambitious, stubborn and a fierce believer in freedom, Navalny spent his life launching a crusade against corruption and deceit he saw infecting Russian politics. He bought stakes in oligarchs' businesses to push for transparency, ran for the mayor of Moscow and finally ran for president in 2018. But Putin's cronies would not allow that to go unchallenged. In 2020, Navalny fell into a coma after being poisoned with Novichok. In 2020, Navalny fell into a coma after being poisoned with Novichok, a Soviet-made nerve agent on a trip to Siberia. The Kremlin rejected it was behind the poisoning, but Navalny, along with the German government, challenged that denial. Russian authorities then raised the stakes, announcing that during his time in Germany, Navalny had violated the terms of his suspended sentence in one of his embezzlement convictions, and that he would be arrested if he returned home. But remaining abroad wasn't in his nature. Once he had recovered, he returned to Russia to be locked up almost immediately in what human rights groups slammed as politically motivated. Hellbent on throwing away the key, 19 years was added to his sentence for trumped up charges of treason, and Navalny found himself inside one of the toughest prisons Russia could offer. In December, he dramatically disappeared from his Siberian penal colony, just to appear weeks later in an even harsher prison, one known as Polar Wolf, just 25 miles from the Arctic Circle. He was weak, suffering serious health problems, and being denied basic health care his team had claimed. Navalny was seen for the last time yesterday in court via a video link. His head was shaved and he looked thin, but appeared to be keeping positive and even made some jokes. Former director of the CIA, David Petraeus, told Times Radio today the news is a tragedy and described him as the most courageous, most significant opponent of Vladimir Putin. British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak called it terrible news. He declared him the fiercest advocate for Russian democracy, who demonstrated incredible courage throughout his life. Alexei Navalny was the most prominent opposition politician in Russia in recent times. Uh, he was an outspoken critic of Vladimir Putin, so much so that when he first started campaigning, uh, he started a Russian internet campaign in which he referred to United Russia, the political party which was founded basically to support Mr. Putin, as a party of crooks and swindlers. And he, this became so widespread that when you searched on the Russian internet for the name of the party, it came up as a suggested search. So he had a very, very high profile in that sense. In more recent years, his organisation was well known for producing very, very slick videos, uh, one about this alleged, this massive palace on the Black Sea that Putin is alleged to have built for himself, causing considerable embarrassment to the Kremlin. The wider implications of his death are the fact that it is almost impossible to be a public member of the political opposition in Russia these days. In Russia these days, he was the most high-profile critic of the Kremlin. Uh, a lot of people are going to be looking at this and saying, well, in effect, he has paid with his life. If we cast our minds back to sort of three and a half years ago, you'll remember that he was the victim of this poisoning uh, in the summer of 2020 when he was on a political campaign. Afterwards, he was flown out for medical treatment um, in Germany. Uh, the doctors there concluded that it was a nerve agent. And the Kremlin has always said, well, of course, we've got nothing to do with this. But then, of course, Navalny, and one of the things his organization, and he was hugely clever at, was uh, with modern technology. They actually got one of the uh, FSB team who he believed had poisoned him on the phone and got him to talk through what had gone. He, he pretended actually to be a senior officer of this man and saying, well, you know, what's gone wrong? Why didn't you finish the job? Uh, and then they made the recording public. And that also, I think, is one of the things that his organisation was really good at. If we look at um, President Putin and, and his administration, 
they're really sort of rooted in 20th century media to a large extent. You know, they believe very much in the power of television, which has always been very important in Russia because it's a massive country, been very difficult for practical reasons to have national newspapers uh, just because of, of the difficulty of distributing them. So right throughout the last century and into this one, TV was massively important. And that is the way that Putin thinks. Navalny's campaign been really, really smart using the internet, using open source material, and often making the Kremlin look stodgy. And I think that's another thing that really annoyed um, Putin, you know, taking it personally, if you like. Um, and so I think in this case, you know, but the lesson that a lot of people are going to take from this is if you try to stand up against the Kremlin in the current climate, things are going to go very, very badly for you, even right up uh, as has happened to Mr. Navalny, losing your life. It's very difficult to know. I mean, the official line is all that we've got to go on. Um, I will say that when uh, Mr. Navalny had been making court appearances, when he had to do those by video link, uh, you could see, and his supporters drew everyone's attention to this, that his health was clearly deteriorating. Uh, he'd obviously lost weight. He was in poor health. Uh, and he was, you know, before he went into prison, uh, he was in pretty good health. You know, he was a pretty healthy man. Uh, he died at the age of 47, um, Once, if these reports are to be confirmed. Uh, but it was pretty clear that if he needed medical attention when he was in custody, he wasn't getting everything that he needed. Now, you can see the statement that the prison authorities have issued, say an ambulance was called. There were doctors on the scene. Uh, but pretty, this is a longer term problem. And obviously, you know, if he was out for a walk, let's not forget it is February. He is in uh, he was in a penal colony north of the Arctic Circle. It is really, really, really harsh conditions. And if this were the only conditions he was getting to exercise in, that's not going to help somebody who was already in poor health. It was a very severe penal colony, as I say, north of the Arctic Circle. So you can imagine in Russia at this time of year, temperatures way, way, way below zero. Uh, he'd been in custody pretty much um, since he made that courageous return from exile in Germany in three years ago in January 2021. Navalny basically decided he had a choice. He could live in exile, as a lot of Russian political critics have ended up doing right throughout history. And we're back now in one of those periods under Vladimir Putin where people will either end up in jail or having to leave the country. He decided that he wanted to go back and he made that return by plane, knowing he was certainly going into custody, uh, a custody from which it turned out he would never emerge. So uh, and the, the way that the system has worked against him, constant new charges being put against him, charges that his supporters readily have always consistently dismissed as being politically motivated. And of course, it was no coincidence that his outspoken criticism of Putin uh, was was clearly linked to the criminal charges that kept he kept facing. One of the problems with the law in Russia is that it's so strict, and this is something that people have talked about right since the 19th century, it is almost impossible uh, to stick to every small bit of the law. So in other words, it is often designed so that if you are a critic of the Kremlin, they can get you on some minor infringement, which then becomes more and more serious. So um, it is. It, it, there's no question that the consistent and renewed charges against him were politically motivated be interesting to see how the Russian state media report it uh, if at all one can imagine it's going to be if it's on the main news it's going to be quite a small item um, I think for other opposition parties a lot of Navalny's organization was already living in exile um, they'd taken that option where he had decided as I say courageously whatever one might think of him uh, to return to Russia um, I think honestly at this stage it's going to be a reminder of how very, very, very difficult it is to uh, at least publicly oppose Vladimir Putin.